Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's a girl fan Lungu back with another reaction video. If you are new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. So, today I'm going to be reacting to when Prophet Muhammad's son died 12 verse Muslims should live by. Big shout out to the person that suggested this without wasting time. Let's get into the video. What exactly does emotional intelligence mean? It is the ability to recognize your own emotions as well as the emotions of others and to understand what is the most appropriate thing to do in that given situation to get to that desired result. When you look at the Prophet Sallallahu and his son Ibrahim passing away, when Ibrahim passed away, the Prophet Sallallahu wasn't actually there. So the Prophet Sallallahu comes back and he hears the news that Ibrahim has passed away. And he kisses Ibrahim at that time and he starts to cry. Tears start to come out of his eyes. And then at that time, Abdurrahman ibn Auf, or it could have been another companion according to other narrations, he asked the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Oh Messenger of Allah, even someone like you is crying? Like how is this possible? Doesn't crying negate Iman? Doesn't crying negate pleasure or acceptance of the Qadr of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala? How is it possible that you as the Messenger of Allah are crying? Because that was his understanding of what crying meant. That if you cry, you are weak in Iman and you're displeased with the Qadr of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam puts things into perspective when he says that indeed crying is a mercy from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. That indeed the eyes will shed tears, the heart will grieve, but the tongue will only say that which is pleasing to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And if I was to look at emotional intelligence, I would say this is like the foundational hadith under the chapter of emotional intelligence. His son has passed away and that it is only natural and human to grieve during that time. It is a time where you need to grieve, where you need to express emotion. And that proper emotion at that time is to shed tears and to be sad. That he understands the correct emotion to display is sadness. And he's also in such a state to explain that to someone else. And this is what I'm talking about, that when we talk about emotional intelligence, it's not just about recognizing the emotion, it's about having the ability to convey it. 12 habits that we want to try to develop in order to become more emotionally intelligent. Number one, to think about our feelings. Oftentimes, speaking about emotions is something that is put in a negative light. Particularly the way men will talk to women, it becomes very, very clear. Why are you being so emotional? We hear that all the time. And this brings to light that emotions are, are something negative. But in reality, this is, couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, even our theology necessitates that we understand certain attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which from a human perspective are emotions. So when you go back to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, and we will not say except that which pleases Allah or makes Allah happy. So this is something that is considered a strength and not a weakness. So when you start looking at your own emotions, this is a sign that you're developing emotional intelligence. You think about feelings. Number two, you learn to pause. You learn to take a step back before you speak, before you react, before you act. This is a sign of emotional intelligence. How many times do we get cut off on the road and the street and our natural reaction is to scream profanity or to say something foul or to, to make a gesture that a Muslim shouldn't be making. That is what happens when people don't take the time to pause. A more appropriate response, and I know this is being very idealistic, but I'm doing this intentionally. Someone cuts you off on the road, you compose yourself and you're like, may Allah guide him. That's what you'd like to achieve in an ideal situation. It's not gonna happen for most of us, but that's the ideal situation. What should be the very least? The very least I should realize from this is just like how I didn't like being cut off on the road. I should understand that when I cut people off, this has the exact same effect on them, right? So you learn to take a pause and reflect on your circumstances and you develop the situational awareness. Number three, you strive to control your thoughts. You understand that your thoughts are like the, you know when the water is going down the sink, it starts going like a whirlpool? Though that is the impact of your thoughts. And eventually, if you don't stop that cycle, you're gonna drown yourself and you're just gonna go down. At some point, you have to stop your thoughts and control your thoughts and you have to tell yourself, I'm in control of my thoughts and my, not, my thoughts are not in control of me. And when you do that, that is a sign of developing emotional intelligence. Number four, you benefit from criticism. 
Someone tells you, brother, sister, I have some advice for you. Our unfortunate natural reaction, who do you think you are to give me advice? Who gave you the authority to give me the advice? How do you have the audacity to give me advice? Like we feel so threatened when someone has a criticism for us. But what we need to realize is that yes, there are some criticisms which are valid, some criticisms that are invalid. The valid ones we embrace and we love the people for them. The ones that are invalid, Jazakallah khair, I appreciate what you have to say. Thank you very much and have a nice day. And you walk on with your life. Number five, you show authenticity. What does that mean? That you know what is right and wrong and your group of friends are doing the wrong thing. Yet you're comfortable enough to do the right thing. The best example that I can give as a young child, when you're with a group of your non-Muslim friends and the time for Salah comes and everyone else is playing hockey, everyone else is playing video games, your authentic self, you know that you should be praying and you're like, you know what? I'm gonna be me. I'm a Muslim, I'm gonna go pray and then I'll come back to doing whatever I have to do. And if they can understand that at a, at a, a basic child level, you'll understand that peer pressure and societal influence transcends that. The way we dress, the way we act, the language that we use, the things that we watch, a lot of it is dictated by society. But a point eventually comes where you have to recognize, I am a Muslim, I have boundaries, and I'm going to be authentic to that. And no matter who says what, that is what I'm going to embrace. Be you, be the best version of yourself. Number six, you demonstrate empathy. Why is empathy so important? I give you the example of the Prophet ﷺ when a Bedouin man comes into the masjid and he starts urinating in the middle of the masjid. The companions radiallahu anhum, the best of Allah's creation that walked on this planet after the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, their reaction was, O Messenger of Allah, let us harm him. O Messenger of Allah, let us physically stop him. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, let him finish. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam goes up to him and tells him, this is a place of worship, urine is impure, and this is not a place to relieve yourself. We want to keep this place as clean as possible. The man's reaction, may Allah have mercy upon me, upon you, and upon no one else. Why? Because the Prophet ﷺ had empathized with him. Where is the empathy? He recognized that this man was a Bedouin man. He wasn't from the city, meaning that he wasn't as educated, he wasn't as literate as perhaps the dwellers of the city were. The Bedouins were just farmers and caretakers of, of the desert. They were shepherds. That's all they knew. And this man perhaps was new to Islam. He didn't know the sanctity of the masjid and he didn't know about the impurity of urine. So he takes the time to explain this to him in the nicest possible way. And then what do you get? That desired outcome that we keep talking about. May Allah have mercy upon me and upon you and upon no one else. Number seven, you're comfortable praising others. Someone does something good, you should be able to say, man, that is amazing, mashallah. Or jazakallah khair for doing that. Or thank you so much, may Allah bless you. Like praising people for the work that they do, is a quality of strength, not a quality of weakness. People develop jealousy and envy in the hearts because they've given up praising people. One of the best ways to protect your heart from jealousy and envy is to praise people for the good that they do. Number eight, you give helpful feedback. As in Ummah, we love to criticize. We want to point out, hey, you know what? There's water dripping from the ceiling somewhere in the Musalla, but we fail to look at the 99.99% of the other amazing facilities that the Musalla has. So when you give feedback, give constructive, positive feedback, and don't, don't be the, the negative person. Don't be the person that wants to pinpoint the negative. Try to give, be an individual that actually gives feedback that is helpful. You know what, this is what is wrong, and this is how I think you should fix it, rather than just be the person that points out the wrong. Number nine, you have no problem apologizing. Apologizing in particularly without giving an excuse. You'll notice that people, most of them inshallah, they'll give an apology, but often they'll want to justify it. When you hurt someone, when you do something wrong, don't justify it. Say, I am sorry. At a later time, give your justification, give your explanation. But at the beginning, just say, I am sorry, without an excuse, embrace the blame, learn from it and accept it and try not to do it again. Number 10, you develop the frame of mind of forgiving and forgetting. You know how evil grudges are and you know how harmful they are and you don't want to hold on to them. Number 11, you keep your commitments. If you're able to keep your word and understand the importance that it has in relationships that people can trust you because it's based upon your commitments, then you'll understand that this is something you have to abide by. Number 12, you help others. If you can focus on beyond yourself, develop an altruistic way of life where you focus on other people, that is a sign of developing emotional intelligence. Hello.
love love the message and the words i mean crying is just the way people express themselves sometimes and others actually don't even cry even if someone uh dies but it's an emotion that occupies us once in a while um the the rules i really can't talk about all of them but they're just great rules that everyone can live by if we live like this i'm sure the world um around us would even be better let's learn to praise our friends clap for our friends when they're successful let's learn to pause before we say something uh, even if we're upset it doesn't give us the right to say something bad to the people that we love we're supposed to take in the moment even if we're not understanding what's going on we should whether we should be responsible for how we respond you can just say okay let's talk about this later than saying very bad words to bring someone down and yeah like i said the rest of the uh rules were very very interesting and i hope we can all practice them pra practice them in our lives let me know what you guys think and a big shout out to the person that actually suggested these make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video